Oh wait, no, you got it on. Uh, it's showing me. I couldn't get a ticket, so I thought I'd come down here and play some country music since we're celebrating it this evening in Nashville, Tennessee. Won't be around this whole time. Actually, you know what? I don't even want to do that. I just want to stand here. This, this Christian guy still in my thunder with his megaphone. So. Can you understand anything he's saying? I can't. I, Jesus comes in a few, a few times. <laughs> we were over in front of the door for about two minutes and uh, they politely asked us to remove ourselves. Um, it was very polite, but we'll give them that. I didn't really have much discourse, so... So, so far, um, almost a thousand people are watching so far. Oh, right now? Yeah. Holy shit. Wow, all right. Okay, so, uh, what should we talk about tonight at the red carpet for the CMAs? Um, well, who, who, are, you, who are you hoping will, will win tonight? Uh, I hope Jason Isbell takes the big one home. Uh, that would be awesome. It's even cooler that he's not here. Love you, brother. Um, I think, uh, I don't know, that's the only person I know. Chris is going up for some, right? He's cool, that would be cool. Um, that, that's Chris Stapleton? Miranda Lambert's cool, hope to see her take some stuff home. I won't see her because we're down here freezing our nuts off, but uh, uh, they're all inside right now, toasty and warm. Um, is, is it true that uh, you might have Keith Urban come out and do a guitar solo with you? That'd be awesome. Keith actually has shown a lot of support for me, man. He wore a shirt on American Idol once, and when I was at the Grammys, I was sitting there in the seat, like. I think Ryan Seacrest was behind me kicking my chair, and Beyonce was sitting up there all beautiful and stuff, and then Keith Urban was in the front. He came over and like sat down. We, we were homies for like five minutes. Uh, he actually wrote me a really nice email one time. He's a really nice guy. Uh, that's, I don't really know anybody else. I, Chris and I went to lunch once. But yeah, Jason's the only, only person up tonight I, I can actually say that I know. Has it been tough um, navigating through all the crowds of uh, country music fans here and autographs? So far, I haven't and, been uh, recognized uh, once. <laughs> it's been pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> says a lot. No, man. Um, I think those cops might have known. Oh yeah. Well, it was, yeah. Let's see, um, do you want to? Let's assume that that, uh, that you, you, know, you, you can ask me anything. I don't care. You're winning a People's Choice Awards here. Uh, award here at the CMAs. Is that the Nickelodeon thing? Oh, I don't know. Um, but uh, if you're going to perform a song at the CMAs, what song would it be? Probably Are uh, the Good Times Really Over for Good by Merle Haggard. Can I do it? Right here? Oh, okay. You're giving a, 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 a better, like, like, an, an exception Still speech. Silver, John, it's a bad place. That'd be cool. That'd be a cool song to sing, actually. Actually, I'm going to do that... Uh, I'm gonna do that when I win album of the year at the, at the next Grammys. I'll sing that song. Uh, how about like a C, your version of CMA acceptance speech? A CMA acceptance speech. Um, nobody needs a machine gun, and coming from a guy who owns quite a few guns, but uh, uh, what else? Uh, gay people should have a right to be happy and live their life any way they want to and get married if they want to without fear of getting drugged down the road behind a pickup truck. Uh, black people are probably tired of getting shot in the streets and being enslaved uh, by the industrial prison complex and uh, hegemony and fascism is alive and well in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you very much.
Oh, someone just commented, bring back the mustache. What do you, what do you got to say about that? Uh, bring, uh, well, see, I got home off the road, and, uh, oh, you can see questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, can see cool, comments. Man. So, uh, I've never, we can do I a Q&A. I can reactivate my Facebook page to do this we shit. Got, so we got, yeah, we're about to get 2,000 viewers. Okay. So we got, I don't take requests, but I'm taking questions about anything you guys want to ask right now. Um, out here struggling on the streets, y'all. Can't get a break in Nashville. So, uh, the mustache. Uh, I'm lazy and I hate shaving. And I got home off the road. It was the first time I've seen my razor since tour started. So I just went for it. I was ready for a change for my kids to know what their daddy's face looks like. Let's see. You got any other questions coming in? Uh, what's your workout routine? Um, well, a lot of diaper changing. A lot of, uh... Uh, emptying the diaper genie, big bags of duty, taking them out to the dumpster, uh, work out. I'll occasionally, if I get anxiety or if I start feeling angry, I'll do I'll do push-ups till I go to sleep. But that's not too much anymore because uh, life's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, um, two questions. Uh, you gonna play with Tyler Childers soon? Yeah, man. Uh, he's doing a show in December down in Atlanta and. Ah uh, shit! No, I can't do that now. I'm, uh, I'm producing a record that week, so damn it. But yeah, I'm a, and next time Tyler comes through town, I'm gonna come sit in. He's a, he's awesome. You want to say what what record you're producing? Uh, no, no. Uh, it might not happen. I I might just be like, yeah, I don't want to do it. Someone asked if you when you're coming back to Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Uh, after the next album comes out. I yeah, this is a good opportunity. We're doing some festivals this year, coming. Um, just to keep the chops up in between working on a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, I've never had the kind of free time and downtime to make the record I think I'm about to try to make next and it's going to be pretty involved and, and I'll probably spend the next next uh, better part of next year working on it. So Richmond, Virginia and everywhere else will probably see you guys 2019. What, um, someone asked me what uh, albums you've listening, been listening to lately. Right, I've been jamming uh, ELO's Greatest Hits. I've been listening to uh, LaRue's 2014 release. And I've been listening to Run the Jewels 3. Seems to get me in a good mood every time. Um, oh no, let me see, hold on. Well, you got my phone, so. Yeah. Uh, man, really, I just put it on shuffle and go all over the place, so. Um, what else? Angel Olsen, I think she's badass. Uh, I don't know. I don't really, man, I've been, since I've been, I've been home, I've just been kind of doing the dad thing, really. Yeah. We're about to, we're about to move uh, way down in the sticks, and so uh, that's been kind of where my focus is at. Someone says, do you, do you know that you're the greatest artist ever? Um, they might be in the building tweeting that, you know, the, the yeah. CMA people. Um, no, I think... No, I don't. So that's what happened to the guitar you threw down on SNL. It is fucking destroyed. And it's, you know, the thing is, I've been trying to kill that guitar for like 10 years because I loved it. The body, uh, maple is stronger than ash. The body completely broke all around the plate where the neck bolts on in two pieces. So I glued it back together and it's hanging on the wall at the house as a piece of art right now. And I might turn it into a table at some point. I don't know. All right. Um, are you a CIA spy, and how many people have you killed? Uh, you know what? If I was a CIA spy, the best cover ever would be telling everybody I'm a CIA spy posing as a country singer, <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and I kill it every time I walk on fucking stage. Everybody in the room dies. So, so it says, are you concerned that being being discovered might ruin you? like it does other stars. I think I read that right. No, because I'll probably never let that happen. My music, uh, I don't know. I, I think, I, you know, I get the weird, I'm a weird, I'm a weird musician. My music's weird. So, I don't know, whatever that means, I don't think I'll ever reach, I'll never make a record watered down enough to go mainstream. Who said you were ever going to cover a John Hartford song? That'd be cool, man. I love John Hartford. That's a good idea. Actually, I want to do a bluegrass record someday with all the guys from Kentucky that are still alive. Like J.D. Crow and uh, Bobby Osborne and, you know, any, Ricky Skaggs. I think that would, that would be so fun. Someone just asked about a, 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 a Sunday Valley reunion. Never going to happen. 
And then a bunch of people keep asking about if you're going to tour with uh, Cody Jenks again. I t I've already have. Cody opened. No, again. Again. Uh, again. Um, I'm moving in a different direction, man. I'm, and, and honestly, I love Cody and I love what he's doing. He's kind of, I'm glad somebody came along and did uh, what a lot of people maybe wish I was still doing. But I, my head just is headed a completely different direction artistically. But I'm, I'm super proud of what him and, and guys like Whitey Morgan and Jason Bolin and Jason Eady and Tyler and all of them are doing. But I, I kind of feel like my work is done in that realm. Uh, someday I'll wake up and feel like making a hard country record again. I just, that ain't tomorrow. Um, and that's just me being honest. Right on. Um, well, there's a lot of people like trying to get asking you to come to their birthday parties and uh, stuff like that. And a lot of people asking to, uh, you know, this come into Europe and stuff. This is the first time I've left my house in like nine days. So so basically, blanket like just wait till the next tour. Yeah, next tour. If uh, if you're That's having a birthday party, hit us up. And uh, but I'm bringing the whole band and Bobby's fucking crazy. Just so you know. Back in the frame, uh, the, in case uh, anyone doesn't know, we're here at the uh, CMA Awards at the Bridgestone Arena with a uh, Grammy winning, gra Grammy winning, never, but non, not CMA nominated um, country performer, Sergio Simpson. I don't, I think that's my fault though. I think you have to submit to be nominated and I'm not sure that we ever submitted or uh, if anybody submitted for me. I, I'm, I'm honestly, I don't know. Uh, so that could have been my fault. Like, I, I'm not going to say that I was snubbed, because I don't know that that's actually true. Did you set the record? Yeah. The record that? But, um, it's really cool to see Jason get recognized on that platform, though. Uh, especially as a, 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 you know, I'm on a label now. He's a, a truly independent artist. And usually, I, I mean, that, that blew my mind, quite, quite frankly. So. Are right, you going to do another sit down with Joe Rogan? Oh yeah, every time I go to LA. The thing about Joe is, now we're actually friends. So like the last time I did his podcast was the second time I did it. And uh, we, I got to the studio and we spent like 30 minutes playing pool and catching up. <laughs> and we smoked, he got that, he's got that, that mad scientist Cali weed and he just put me down, man. So by the time we got to the podcast, one, I couldn't formulate sentences, and two, there was nothing left to talk about. So we learned our lesson. But yeah, now every time I go to LA, we try to make it happen. Uh, he's an intense individual. Really, really, really inquisitive, smart, uh, sincerely good dude. So I, I, feel, I feel proud to know him. Uh, also, someone's like, um, are, you know, are you going to the CMAs or are you just hanging out? I'm just hanging out. I'm just, I'm just down here being an asshole. <laughs> No, Mama told me if you're good at something, don't ever do it for free. So I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I've actually never been in this place, man. It's, it's kind of, it's a pretty structure. It's home to the ball sports arena, home of the Nashville Predators. Look at this guy, man. He is. Like, he's definitely in it. How does this guy rank among open opening acts? <laughs> I will see. I'm. I like stirring shit up. So like, I would. I brought my my friend Billy Wayne out to open for us, which was one of the best tours we ever did. Um, every night we were on the side of the stage watching uh, the set. Yeah, you know, this light is kind of clearing. Oh, sorry. Right. Person who recommended that. It's a good call. It's a. Thanks. There's thanks, a lot of lights out here. Lighting director from afar. Yeah. Right. yeah um, I would. Would I take a Christian Zealot with a megaphone out? On tour to open for me? Is that what you're asking? Oh, uh, I'm just saying if he's, op he's technically opening for you. Oh, uh, he, no, he's well, you're doing a duet. You're doing a duet. Right yeah. now is what he's doing, man. He's stealing all my thunder. All right. Let's see. Where, uh, let's see what questions. Favorite venue to play? Favorite? Oh, wow. Okay, that's a good one. Um, we just played. The last tour we did, I played, we played a bunch of rooms I've literally dreamed about playing my entire life, and Red Rocks is always amazing. Uh, the, there's, there's just certain rooms in the world that there's been so much music uh, and vibration and sweat generated in the walls that it's almost impossible to have a bad gig. Ryman's definitely up there. Fillmore West is oh, yeah. pretty amazing. The Paradiso in Amsterdam, I don't know why I'm really partial to that. Uh, but hardly strictly bluegrass. That festival is everything the live music experience should be. One, it's free. Two, there's like 500,000 people just all there to have a great time 
and I, don't, I think it was the end of the tour and you know you spend all year on the road and you get so tired and you miss home and you miss family but then you walk out on stage every night and all that goes away and it's like you know we get so into it any little thing like a technical difficulty or anything just throw, like I get so pissed off because I just want to like I want it to be as good as it can be and I think the, we played that show as the last show of this tour and it might have been the, my favorite gig I've ever played because we came out and it was like probably 75, 80,000 people as far as I could see and we were just like, it was just an hour, you know, and that's what it's all about. So next year I just want to play festivals and throw a fucking party. Nice. So if there's a festival in these folks' town, I guess. Do you keep asking about the dates? Let's see, okay, here. Saw you in Ashland, Kentucky, and waited for you after the show for autographs, but you never came out. Is that typical? It is typical. I have to save my voice. I also suffer from, uh, there's no bullshit. I have extreme social anxiety, and I'm a highly introverted individual. I used to I used to run the merch booth myself, and then we got to play in venues where that just wasn't feasible anymore. Uh, if somebody, if I run into people, I'll stand and talk, talk to them all day. But it, it's, I have to save my voice, so it's tough every night to stand and talk to like literally hundreds of people. But and if somebody was standing at the bus and I missed them, then I, you know I got no excuse on that. That's, sorry, man. Uh, um, I, I kind of, I actually enjoy the conversations. It's just when people run up and just stick a camera in your face. And yeah. There's no human connection whatsoever. That's always, I, I started doing this way too late and too old in my life to take the fame thing seriously. Cause I'm kind of, like this is, I'm just like highly jaded and cynical about all the celebrity shit, you know, the puff puff. So, um, but if people want to come up and just like, hey, what's up dude? Then I'll stand there all fucking day, man. That's. All right, let's see. Are you only making five albums? Are you still only yes, making five I'm albums? Yes, I'm only making five albums. Uh, and they all do serve a cohesive narrative uh, of the life journey of a human soul from a traditional Western perspective. So High Top Mountain was a seminal album or a past life, like you can't go home. Meta Modern was ethereal, literally like uh, the, the soul's journey through space or the metaphysical trying to find its way. Uh, Sailor's Guide represents birth and, and life life lessons learning. I'm, I'm, this is all. The next one uh, is going to be about life and sin, and we're literally going to go to hell. And the fifth one will be uh, returning to the light or absolution. It's going to uh, Kanye or Drake? Kanye. <laughs> all fucking day, Kanye. <laughs> hey, girl, I wish you was on my... Yeah, I don't get the Drake thing at all. All right. Someone says uh, they talk about you so much that their phone autofills your name. You might, you need a hero, bro. All right. <laughs> okay. Would you do an album with Stapleton Highwayman style, or Isbell and Stapleton Highwayman style? You kind of just answered that. Uh, I, absolutely, after I get my shit out of the way. Yeah, uh, at some point I got a feeling when, when well, I think it'd be cool once we all get to the point where we we don't know, I, I, like I'm only in competition with myself, you know what I mean? So when I feel like I can't outdo myself anymore, ideally I think it would be really cool if Jason and Chris and, and Margo and a bunch of people like that, we all just went on the road together forever, you know? I think that's what the fans want. I had a journalist point that out to me recently. I did my last interview with this really cool girl, Annalise from Vice, back in New York a few weeks ago. And I got this bad habit when I do interviews, I get bored really quick and I just start saying dumb shit I don't even mean and intentionally self-contradicting myself just because, you know, generally you do like, you, if you could do 20 interviews, you know, with the press racket cycle of it all and you answer generally the same seven or eight questions over and over until to the point where your, your answers become verbatim. And I just realized that doesn't do me or my fans or anybody any good to read that shit over and over and over. Or you're, a lot of times you're just filling in gaps on somebody else's narrative. You know, they're looking for a juicy pull quote, so I'll just throw some ridiculous shit out there. And then when I see them smile and they get the twinkle, <laughs> then, you know, I figure, like, okay, it's probably cool. But, uh, the fuck was the question? I don't remember. Someone asked something about um, why, uh, why you don't do encores or if that's normal. Or oh, because okay. encores are the new mosh pit. Uh, we come out <laughs> and try to give our all 100%, whether it's 90 minutes, two hours, whatever. But the whole, I, I'm a, I got a very low bullshit threshold in a, in, 
to me, like walking off stage and pretending like we're not coming back and everybody in the crowd acting like we're not coming back and then we fucking come back. So let's just skip that and just keep rocking the fuck out until we're done, you know what I mean? Um, someone's asking who your favorite character to be uh, play is. Who's your favorite character to play as on Goldeneye? What's that? Who your favorite character to play as on Goldeneye? Goldeneye? Oh, James, man. <laughs> I, I haven't played that game in like 20 years, but... Uh, it was uh, it got me through some hard times, so whoever made it, thank you. Uh, How you doing, man? What's up? I like your tie. Thank you. My daughter gave me Right? Are you, go are you going in? No, I was already in there. I was just... You could, you're already out? Yeah. What happened? I, yeah, I just started walking around, man. I was bored, so I came out here to say, hey. Right on. Right on. Right on. I walked by and I was like, is this guy or something? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you can play it, Tonight? Yeah, right now? Here. What do you want to hear? Don't do that one no more. You know? I can't, because my life isn't... People ask me why I don't sing that song. I'll tell them right now. When Wait, I wrote which that song? song people... uh, King Turd. Okay. Um, it, when I wrote it, like, it was, I was kind of, it was intended to be a satire of laundry list country songs. So I tried to sit down and write a laundry list country song that actually applied to my life and the, and the struggle I was going through at the time, which I, right now isn't the case anymore. Like, my life's pretty good, you know. Our yeah. career's going to do it. The band's great. My wife, my kids are healthy. So You're still struggling. Huh? Still struggling. I'm still struggling. Quotations. Uh, <laughs> struggle Simpson. <laughs> 17. All right, and... So yeah, the last few times we tried playing that song live, I, I, I literally felt like I was just going through the motions because I didn't. Anything you want to play, man? I'd love to hear. It. All right, man. Dude, you got me on the spot now. What do you want to hear? What else do you want to hear? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know turtles. Like turtles. Yeah, man. I've seen Jesus play the flame, lake of fire. I was standing. With the devil in Seattle, spitting on monster sides of lion's teeth. With the booty head another time, don't me glowing like me then. But I swear to God, still, I must still be my best friend. Did I miss a whole verse? 
See, that's what happens, man. I only They're forget, yelling behind I only forget the yeah. words to songs I wrote. I got like 8,000 old bluegrass and country songs floating around here and I'll never miss a beat. But I'll forget, I forget the words to my shit like seven times a night on every show, I swear to God. How does that even happen? Can I get a picture with you, man? Brother, you can get on Facebook Live with me right now if you want to. Yeah, I'll make you fucking famous. Come here. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, what's your name? Dusty. Graver. Dusty. Dusty said, fuck that shit and came outside to hang out with us. So Dusty's all right in my book. All yeah. right. Man. Thanks, brother. Nice to meet you, bro. Are you a musician, Dusty? What's that? Are you a musician? Hey, man. I'm a photographer. How you doing? Dude, big fan. This is awesome. Right on. Didn't know. Oh. That, that's my tip job. <laughs> I got um, my point. Anybody's got it? I'm going to give it to the ACLU if you want to throw a buck in the I'll Grammy, bro. All right. Play your song. That's, probably, that's the first time that thing's been out of that box. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, I took it home. It's still in the phone box. I put it in the closet because I, I don't have, I mean, my wife hung up uh, some of the awards and, and a lot of posters for a while, and I just was sitting around looking at all that shit, and it felt like I was just staring at a bunch of stuff that already happened. Yeah. So, it, and I try to always, you know, think forward. So, at some point, I'm going to box it all up and take it to my grandma because I'm sure she'll just build like a damn shrine in the house, you know what I mean? But, uh, it might be the first Grammy that's ever been to the CMA Awards. Maybe. I don't know. That would be Meta Modern. First time, Meta I, went, first time I went to Merle Haggard's house, he, he won, he had one Grammy, I think, in his, in his career. But he was using it as a door stopper to hold the front door open. So that put a lot of things like immediately in perspective in terms of that. But now, those actually, people say they don't mean anything anymore, but like that's the one that to me actually means the most because they're voted on by other songwriters and engineers and producers, your actual peers, you know, that are, that are they're saying that your work deserves to be recognized. So that's, that's not something I take lightly at all. I, I was very humbled and appreciated. Uh, you know, and my grandfather lived long enough to see me win that. I think that put a few weeks on his life, so that was probably the best part. So, uh, we're about to hit 4,000 people on the live stream. We've got a crowd of 4,000 online and a crowd of four. We got four, uh, four here or and 4,000 at home. All right. Um, put things into perspective, maybe. Um, so, I don't know what to say unless you ask me something. Yeah. Um, these questions are moving fast. Wow. Thing. Um, you guys got what you got any questions? Man, uh, I was just, uh, you know, I'm up here working. And, uh, First off, I just want to say that I don't take requests, but I do take questions about anything you want to talk about because fascism sucks. All right, so uh, that's it. Man, I, I got a question. Uh, just wondering why you're out here. I'm over here working. I had to look back a couple of times, taking out the trash, and uh, I'm like, man, is that? Well, I heard they were celebrating country music tonight down here, so I thought I'd come down and play some. Right on, man. Right on. Well, you're, you're, you're doing it, man. Like, make country music country again. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's on your hat. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Uh, uh, so. I didn't expect it to be 38 degrees and my fingers were already like hum, 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 hum. So, there you go. What's your name? Luke. Luke Monday. Yeah, Luke man. Monday. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've been there. I like your liberties. Hey, thanks, man. I had a, my great grandfather. It's the only thing I ever saw him wear. Really? My entire life. Liberty on the wall. Man, I bring him out occasionally. Ladies actually seem to, seem to like him, man. You know? So, hey. Your taters appreciate it too. <laughs> I had to wear them on the railroad for like four years straight. And the thing about them, they're dangerous because you don't really have to pay attention to what your waistline's doing. Right, yeah. So you, it'll get away from you in a hurry. You get that comfortable all the time, and all of a sudden you look down, you got like a, a spare tire around your stomach. You don't even notice it. Someone yeah. just asked you what you think of our current president. He's a fascist fucking pig and I'm not afraid to say that because at this point anybody that's still supporting that guy can't be anything in my mind other than an ignorant fucking bigot so there it is anybody that's surprised to hear me say that is going to unfollow me or stop listening to my records they probably weren't listening that close anyway <laughs> how you doing man how about Rose tonight uh, damn. 
No, brother, I'm out here trying to make it. Are you kidding? <laughs> right on the sidewalk trying to get it done, dude. Kyros in. I bet you make it up. Alright, I'm fine, brother. I got it cool. I'm going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> I want to go get my camera and take these real pictures. Oh, there'll be, there'll be pictures on mine. So. Someone asked, uh, uh, Medicine Springs first you did, Oh yeah, that's a little Ralph Stanley song, man. Yeah, man, that's killer. We, I almost, I got the, I got in the studio, we almost cut that live, and then I just one, one cover of records usually enough. Um, but that's a really, I'd love to just sit down and do like a, just a acoustic solo album of all a lot of those old songs I love sometimes. Yeah, you can probably do it on an iPhone, you know. But yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Alright, you gotta get back to work. I am. Yeah, I'm on the block. Over here at Rippy. Hang out at Rippy's for a minute, man. Uh, we're your friendly car back over there. Alright, see you, Luke. Yeah. Be good, dude. Um, oh, by the way, we just got a notification that uh, 20% battery, phone battery. Oh, 20%? Alright, we can kill it. I don't care. No, I'm just letting you know. We'll just go to the battery dies, I guess. I, uh, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't even know, like... Oh. No, I'm good. That's all I got. <laughs> you, you got any questions on it? Okay. What's up, dude? What's up, man? How you doing, oh. Hanging out, man. Causing trouble. Trying to make some money, huh? Yeah, trying <laughs> to make a little money. Mm -hmm. For the cost. Yeah. <laughs> I know you doing. I met you up with Jack Brown's buddy years so ago. Remember I was I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. He's After a Kentucky boy, man. I'm a Kentucky boy, too, down south side. I've been, you know, man, I used to go to that place a lot and the last time I went. No offense, I think I just might have got a bad, it did me so dirty that I haven't been back. Um, did you get the Elvis? I, no, no, I didn't do the Elvis. I, I, it's probably my fault. I think I did go double cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> but it just hit me like, before I was even home. So I'll go, uh, I'll go, actually I'll go tomorrow. I'm going to give it a shot now that I said that. A redemption, shot of redemption. Yes, uh, give, give the Jack, Jack Brown absolution. I always called it Jack Ryan's. Like uh -huh. Patriot games, and my wife keeps telling me like I'm a fucking idiot. Like, yeah. So we, uh, let's see. Okay. Mm, what kind of guitar do you play? I play a lot of guitars, there, right? Man, up until a year and a half ago, I owned one guitar. I had this Martin D28 that I've had since high school, and we did we did two years of touring, and I just had that one guitar, and then I never broke a string. And I, for some reason I was like, I should probably get a second guitar. Before I could do that, Martin reached out and wanted to, uh, which I, I'm really proud of that because that's a pretty historic company. Um, and then they, they made me this one, which I played on the road pretty much since I got it. And then this year I went electric and I mostly played Telecasters for years. And then I got this really great Les Paul that I just kind of fell in love with that I haven't put down much since I got it. And, uh, I don't know. I bought. I, I used to just make my Telecasters myself. I don't. I don't think I own an actual Fender. Um, and the one, the one the guy asked about, I smashed on SNL. I built that one, and it just, uh, you know, got a little carried away. Shit happens. Someone asked if you could wrap a few bars of Run the Jewels. Oh shit! What did that? Well, he can't. No, I can't because uh, that would be insulting to kill Mike. I'm not even going to try to do that. Also, it's worth noting that they spelled rap with a W. So <laughs> maybe they didn't mean like rap, like rap. Got it. Like a gift rap. Got it. Uh, got, to got to appreciate social media. Yeah. Um, simultaneously, the best and worst thing that ever happened to the human race. Um, I think we're about What's it like to do DMT? I don't know. I've never done it. Oh. <laughs> Um, it's it's uh, completely pointless to even try to describe it in words. Right. Um, next next to an alien, I tell you what, if an alien spaceship landed in your front yard and they knocked on your door and said, "Hey, do you want to go on a trip across the galaxy 
and have everything you ever thought and known understood ripped apart in front of your eyes, would you go? Oh, wow. Okay. Someone said I was asking about way more blues than why you don't play it. Uh, we used to. Um, I don't know, man. I just, you know, it's, it's like anything else. You do something eight or nine hundred times, you just kind of want to do something else. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I don't really have a, I don't have an answer for that. It's, it's a great song, though. Um, it's, uh, it's what you call a American folk song. There's a really cool video on YouTube of him playing it for Jesse on some talk show with an acoustic guitar. That might be my favorite version. Sounds like it's on Johnny Carson. Was it on Carson? Okay. Yeah, she's yeah, sitting there and he's like, he's like yeah. trying to pretend yeah. like he doesn't he know what he wrote about. Yeah. He's kind of thinking of himself. That's pretty good, yeah. You got a question, man? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank, thanks, man. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing, but I, know, yeah. uh, <laughs> I got nothing better to do, obviously. So. All right. Did you, were you in the show? Yeah, I was going to try and do a uh, Omni bit. An Omni bit? Comedy bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's got his comedy bit. You're a comedian? Uh, yeah, sort of. Almost, I got a lot of friends out in LA now, but they're all comedians. I don't really yeah. know any musicians. And that is a fucked up world, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough, like trying to, because mine's like character based, okay. more or less. So uh, it's a lot of. Uh, I kind of, it really makes me envious though, because like when I hang out with those guys, just how they talk to each other and, and give notes to each other about their, cra it's brutal. Like they're just, oh yeah, so no, brutal. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, like I'm in, I'm in a safe zone because I'm not a threat. You know, I'm not sure, there to yeah. take a set, yeah. so everybody's cool to me. But. Uh, right. I mean, the, the brutal honesty, it's kind of admirable, and I wish the music business was a lot more like that. Oh, I, I can't just speak that Most, uh, We all just sort of pretend like we're friends and we're not right, in competition sure, sure, with sure, each sure, other, sure. you know? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah I, I guess in that sense, it's a little, it's a little easier to uh, know who's who's actually a, a friend or a comrade right. or whatever. And, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, it's just fun. I enjoy it. Where are you from? I'm from here. Are you? Yeah. So, it's a little different trying to do comedy in Nashville, but... Take a My biggest hero. Oh, dude. I can't believe I'm meeting you right now. This is amazing. I'm I'm from Miami, Florida. All your records have made a huge impact on me and my writing, my style. I can't believe I, I'm here this week making music of Nashville and I come across. Are you playing? Are you playing? Yeah. Yeah, for real. Um, we're going to kind of play like the Mar Margaritas on Broadway and, you know, my kind of style is so influenced by so many other things other than the stuff that's going on and being played on, on Broadway. But that's good. I man. landed a gig yeah. and uh, I do a lot of your songs. And Life of Sin is, is we played all over the honky tonks in Miami. So everybody, everybody asks me, hey, we love that song. It's Sturgill Simpson. So you know we we just love your music down there. Thank and I've actually got my guitar player from my band here tonight. <laughs> this is amazing. I can't, I can't. That is a large cigar. So. <laughs> The closest thing to Cuban food down here was a place called Cuba, back to Cuba, back west. So. Man, I was we were just down there. We did a show with, with Guns N' Roses. Oh, yeah, man, I was there. I probably drank like killed it. 80 Cubanos in a week. And then and so I got hooked on them. And then after we left there, everywhere else we go, I go to try to get coffee in the morning and order a Cubano. And no, they won't make them anywhere else. They said it fucks the machine up because they got to pour all the raw sugar. And I'm like, well, how do they make them in Miami and Cuba? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, Grandma, Grandma just kind of scrambles it all over there. Can't take a picture. Of yeah, dude, have, we're Thanks. actually on Facebook okay. Live right now. If you want. Oh man, yeah. Hey, tell everybody where you're playing. Okay. This game. Yeah. I'm here with my. I don't know. I can't believe I'm next to you, man. Uh, don't talk about me. Tell them where you're. <laughs> tell them where you're playing. Margaritaville. All right. Um, Nashville, Tennessee. On Broadway. Yeah. When? Where? Uh, uh, when? Uh, tomorrow, from three to seven thirty. Three p.m. Nice. So, can't when? believe it. Four and a half hour set. They're making me. Yeah, kind of pull through it. So. Okay. I don't have to get a shot, man. man. That's awesome. <laughs> Three and a half, four and a half. Bro. I guess I got to do the Stetson. I don't okay. got you. Yeah, I got you. The National. We're taking a picture on Facebook Live. That's <laughs> 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. Good morning. Good morning.
Can you get one quick? Can you get one? I gotta get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Battery. Uh, below 10%. All right. Some people ask for a song. If, I don't know, are you doing something? Well, I got it. Well, that's good. Might have time for one. Yeah, look at. All right. This is this is about the size of my first crowd. Uh, <laughs> the first show I played in Nashville, right here. So. How y'all doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just doing our stuff. I'm not sure what this is. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Thanks for coming out. Let's see. Let's see if I can get you to uh, open for Tyler Childers in Atlanta. Open for Tyler. <laughs> I would do that. Yeah. Uh, what, the Earl, like the 8th of December. What's the sh what's is it the seventh? The seventh or eighth? The seventh. Yeah. I think I'm going to be in the studio working with somebody. Or I told his promoter I was going to come down. I would actually. I would do that. I would open for Tyler. He's you fucking great. Culture, culture walls, dude, I, mean, like the week after. I don't know Coulter. Uh, I heard a little bit of the record, but I've never met him. That'd be a good opener. Yeah. He's playing here. Him, him and Tyler are buddies. I've, I've never had a chance to meet him. Um, Tyler's my record's doing pretty good, man. I'm really happy for him. He's been busting his ass for a long time. For somebody as young as he is, it's kind of it's, it's amazing the dues he's already paid. You know. Yeah. Do you want to take a photo with us? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Would you want to take a photo for us? You okay? No, I'm fine. I, we, right. we ran like five blocks. Oh, shit. Oh, we saw wow. you on we Facebook. Ran the goal. We, right. we were in the pub. And, uh, and we saw nice. you on Facebook Live. Oh. Where do you want to be? Uh, <laughs> yes, tell me. Sorry. I'm sorry, man. No, I'm sorry. We're, we're very sorry. Awesome. Thank you. I got this big thing on my back. Oh, what is that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming out. Thank you. We realize what this means. This, this, this means. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure. I realize what this means. <laughs> well, you're not in there, but you're out here with us. There you go. That's, that's all it means to us. Thank you. That's, I don't. That's, Absolutely. I feel comfortable out here. Yeah. Yeah, man. Thank you. All. Thank you, man. Damn, y'all got some big ass cameras to just be walking around the street. One, two, three. One, two, three. There you go. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. What, what's going on here? I'm not using that one. Oh, okay. Well, something like that cost. Just out of curiosity. I understand that. I took my wife to Gatlinburg for our honeymoon. We rode go karts. <laughs> and then our five year anniversary, we went back. It was even more fun. You could ask for a song. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be rude, though. Water in the wood. I'd be rude to 10 people or however many are watching that. I don't know. You got like over 4,000. Well, all right. Shit, man. Looks can be deceiving. There's been rumors going around. One look at me, the same thing you believe in. Everything you heard out here in the sand. If miles remind you, water in a well. Hold your heart to stone. I know sometimes it seems like my mind belongs to a child that's grown. Somewhere between you and me, I've lost my way and I'm trying to get back home. Trying like hell, but you soon as hell. Our love is all dried up. Water in them. Cold weather is hell on tuning. <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix never needed a tune up, so it's okay. The 
Lord knows I've tried to move on Get you out of my mind You find your way in All my song Every memory I can manage to find Someday if I'm standing on Big old stage You're down in the crowd Try and tell your friends All I used to know and when In your heart you know it ain't true somehow Try and not help but Too soon to tell Our love is all dried up See, if it was me walking by, I would steal that fucking drink. <laughs> Water. He, he thought about it. I saw it. He was like... <laughs> Shit. All right. I lost it. All apologies. Right. Who would have chased See, look at that camera, man. That thing's intrusive. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, that was a battery. Uh, well, it doesn't say. It only, like, I, the last was the... Um, just like a notification that comes up. It said you're about to die. It's said 10%. 10%. That was like All right. six minutes ago. Hey, let's see what, you guys got anything you want to say to the internet? Hey friends. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you think we can get in here if we try? <laughs> Actually, no. You got, you got a better chance of getting in there than I do. I promise you that. <laughs> well, we made 13 bucks for the ACLU tonight, so it's all worth it. All right. Uh, anybody from Houston? No. All right. She goes, I don't think you want me to take it. She's like, oh, it's way too good for the, me. Is that the airport? That's the airport in Oakland. Wow, she I remember that. She pulls yeah. you aside. <laughs> I'm friends with Sean McKinney. I'm an attorney downtown. Okay. And so he knows I love you. And I was like, my wife called me. I was like, I'm a good picture with you. She, I don't think he wants it. She's like, she told you I was in the Navy. So I'm in Nashville. You know, brother. I love the music, man. Two of the best albums that changed my life was Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> Tupac. 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 Two of the best albums I think I've ever heard. It's amazing. He's a great And I'm with you 100% on Trump. And I'm a veteran. All my friends are veteran. So I'm a veteran. So, man, thanks a lot. Yep. Glad you're out here. Thank you. Sit down. How you doing, man? Good. Can I get a picture? Absolutely, dude. All right. So, I was literally.